Hi guys, uh, welcome back to uh, Valencia College. And um, so tomorrow, today is the Sunday afternoon. Tomorrow we Monday, and this is the day of uh, day Valencia really start officially uh, after the spring spring break. And um, I don't know that how long. Well, we have to do it like this, but I think that you guys feel comfortable when I set it up like this. I have the whiteboard at home, I have a tripod, I just bought it. Um, so, uh, hopefully that you feel comfortable and you feel like you're in the classroom. I think uh, some of you will uh, like this. Uh, maybe some don't like it, that's fine. You, we, we do what we have to do, okay? And I also hope that you guys already watched the, the previous video. Um, uh, I want you to watch it as soon as I, as soon as you can because um, in the next few weeks right, we're gonna have more video. Okay, and just think about it. I, I know that when you you stay at home and you watch the video, it's kind of make you lazy. But that's why I really want to encourage you to watch it as soon as you can, okay? Because we will have more videos coming up. So, uh, before I start the lecture, um, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, um, I already uh, grade the second test and I already posted it on Connect Math. I already grade your um, uh, assignment number, uh, number four. I, I haven't posted it, but I. Uh, uh, hopefully that this week I will post it. All the solution uh, in PDF file. Uh, you can download it. The, the solution of the test and the solution of the assignment uh, already been posted on Canvas. So you go to File tab on Canvas. You will see. You will see the solution in PDF file, and you can go ahead and watch it. I don't have time to uh, record a video uh, going through uh, the solution of test number two anymore. So um, try to take your time and uh, and watch the solution, okay? And uh, download and uh, and really uh, understand the solution. Uh, uh, regarding the assignment number five, uh, it will be due tomorrow, right? And. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I should give you more time because I don't see much different. Um, that that assignment should have been um, uh, submitted uh, pretty long time ago, um, and um, I don't know. I don't know if if I give you more time, it's uh, it's gonna help you a little bit because right now. I, I don't know that um, the math center, um, the place where you can get help from the tutor, uh, will be uh, reopened. When they will be uh, reopened, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to give you an uh, official announcement soon. But um, yeah, uh, they, probably, uh, they probably give each of you so only four hours and do it online. So uh, they not going to open the math center physically but uh, they're gonna set up the, the, the tutoring session online for you and uh, you can assess that tutoring uh, through canvas also so um, uh, I'm gonna give you an announcement I'm gonna show you how to get into that um, actually uh, I just copy paste from the math department the math department sent me that a paragraph show you how to get to the the, the tutoring uh, then uh, hopefully that uh, I will uh, get uh, to you uh, by tonight and I send it so that you can go through and hopefully in the morning uh, you can uh, watch it and uh, you can open the, your canvas machine and read it and, and uh, you uh, you will be able to assess the tutoring okay I don't promise anything okay it's just uh, uh, and I'm not really sure when they reopen uh, in the, the mass center or when they will be setting up the, the tutoring online for you. I don't know. I just copy and paste uh, whatever the magic power gave me. If you want to get more information, I think you have to call the, the mass center. There's a uh, the phone number. You can look it up online and call the mass center, okay? And you can talk to the supervisor there. Uh, his name is Richard. Uh, Richard Swenger. And you can uh, talk to him and ask him uh, when they uh, when he's gonna set up uh, um, the tutorings online for you. 
Okay. Before I uh, I start the the new lecture, I want um, to uh, do a quick recall what we already been uh, learning. So about a few weeks ago, we talked about. So I do I put recall here. Okay, we talk about some um, basic function, um, and uh, those uh, those two. We have two basic function. Uh, this is in fractional form, which is um, f of x equal to one over x, and another function is f of x equal to one over x squared. And I say that this is the basic function for a uh, rational uh, function okay and you know that the graph of this function is it look like this 1 over x it look like that right okay and for uh, 1 over x square it look like this okay and by looking at the x-axis and y-axis, we can find the domain. So the domain of this function will be uh, x different from zero because it's under denominator. So the domain will be everything except for zero. So we will have negative infinity to zero, union with zero infinity. Okay. And for this one, uh, kind of the same thing because you see that it's never cross zero. Okay, so we have negative infinity to zero, u into zero infinity. So this is the information you already learned uh, about uh, more than a month ago. And you're supposed to memorize all the D, the domain, and you're supposed to memorize all the, the basic graph of this uh, function, this fractional function. Okay, so you see that for this graph, we I also mentioned that there are um, vert something called vertical asymptote and, and horizontal asymptote. So we have horizontal asymptote here, we have horizontal uh, asymptote as the x-axis, we have uh, uh, y-axis as the vertical asymptote because you see the, the curve, these two curves never cross the y-axis and the x-axis. Okay. So this is the, the basic one, the basic function which is in uh, fractional form. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, a function that's more complicated than this. And we're going to use the concept in the last lecture. Uh, the last lecture we talked about uh, a long division and synthetic division, right? Those concepts help us to understand better another function. It's called rational function. Okay, so today. I want to talk about rational function. Okay. And a typical example of rational function is this one. So I can say that fx, example, fx equal to 1 over x is rational function. And fx equal to 1 over x squared is also a rational function. Okay, so this is a basic example of rational function. Of course, this, so some rational function is more complicated than this. We're gonna, I'm going to give you more example uh, of rational function. And the concept we learned last time, it helped us to understand better rational function. It helped us to uh, know um, and to find the vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote as long as a slanted asymptote. As a slanted asymptote I never mentioned before, but you will see that in this lecture also. Okay? Uh, but first of all, we need to know uh, what the rational function is. So I want you to go through the first Roman definition. What is rational function? Aris, 
uh, uh, told you before that a rational function is actually, it must be in a fractional form, right? For example, in 1 over x, and 1 over x squared is rational function. But it's not just being about in a fractional form, okay? The most important thing that the rational function, it must be in the form of fx equal to p of x over q of x. It is in fractional form, because we have the bar here. It is in fractional form, but other than that, the top and the denominator, in this case, the top is p of x and q of x. So p of x and q of x <coughs> must, be, <coughs> must be polynomial. Okay, must be polynomial. If they are not polynomial, we cannot say that f of x is rational function. Okay, so I'm going to box this. Okay. <coughs> it must be in polynomial function. And of course, q of x, q of x must be different from zero. Right? Because if q of x is equal to zero, we cannot divide by zero. Okay? okay, q of x must be different from zero. Alright, example. Okay, so I'll give you the example that's more complicated than this rational function. So this is, remember, this is the rational function, okay? This is basic rational function, we already done. I can give you something like this. And let's say that this is the rational function, f of x equal to um, um, x plus 1 over 2x plus 3. <coughs> I say this is a rational function because first of all, it, in, it is in fractional form. Fractional form. Secondly, the top p of x, x plus 1 is polynomial. The bottom 2x plus 3 is also polynomial, it's linear. Linear, linear, because it's linear. Linear, first linear function is polynomial function. Okay, so we have polynomial over another polynomial. So this fraction, this function, is rational function. Okay. I can give you another one, another example. I call this f two of x. I can have something on the top like uh, a, a quadratic and the bottom is just uh, 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 linear okay something like that okay. and I also say that this function is rational function because on the top we have quadratic quadratic is quadratic function is rational function it is a polynomial function and the bottom is a first linear degree polynomial so they both polynomial and because they are polynomial they are rational function okay so f1 and f2 they are rational function and I can give you something that is not rational function but it's still in fractional form Okay. For example, on the top I have uh, radical x plus y, at the bottom I have x cubed plus 2x plus 3, for example. So this is not rational function. This is not rational function. Because even though this is a fractional form, but you see on the top we have radical. It is in radical form. Because it's in radical form, so this is not rational function. Okay? It's not rational function. And in order to um, uh, understand a better uh, rational function, we want to um, uh, to talk about uh, about the domain. Okay? We also talk, want to talk about the range. We also want to talk about uh, how to find a vertical or horizontal asymptote of the function, a rational function, or another asymptote we call a slanted asymptote. Okay. 
So on the second part, on the second part of this video, so I call that the second Roman. I want to talk about the asymptote. Okay. So it doesn't matter what kind of asymptote I'm talking about. When you have asymptote, you know that the curve of the graph, okay, uh, the, curve, the the graph of the function, it never uh, cross the x or y axis. Okay, the curve it never cross the x or y axis. Okay. And the behavior, behavior will be something like when x and y approach to infinity. You remember last time we talked about any behavior. Uh, the, when x approach to x infinity, I'm sorry, the y approach to y, uh, positive or negative infinity. Okay, something like that. Okay. And the first kind of asymptote I want to talk about it is vertical asymptote. I will help you find the vertical asymptote of the rational function. And vertical asymptote is uh, pretty simple. You know that the denominator, q of x, must be different from 0. So if you set q of x, the denominator equal to 0, it will give you the equation of a vertical asymptote. Okay? So let me give you an example. Um, let me see. How about this? So vertical asymptote is um, you set setting um, denominator equal zero. Okay. It will give you equation of um, <coughs> vertical asymptote. Okay. <coughs> For example, if I have f x like this, okay, f of x equal to two over x minus three. Okay. So this is rational function because on the top we have a number and the number is considered as polynomial okay so we have polynomial over another polynomial and it's in fractional form so this is rational function so in order to find a vertical asymptote you set the denominator x equal to x minus 3 equal to 0 okay then you solve for x so x equal 3 so this is vertical asymptote Okay. It's kind of the same thing when you find a domain, you know. But in order, if when finding when when you find a domain, at the value here, the value here, when after you calculate x, it's not the domain. Okay, the domain will be everything else. Okay, but in this case, when you find a vertical asset, the value here is vertical asset. So the equation, not the value. Okay, this is the equation and the value. The value, we can write like this and you can consider as the equation uh, and or you can consider as the, uh, a value but, but for vertical asymptote you consider this as the equation because x equals 3 is the vertical line it's a vertical line, okay? so you will have vertical asymptote like that x equals 3 remember, uh, when you have vertical line, the equation is x equal a number that's that's what you already learned when you uh, when you have intermediate algebra. When they ask you to find um, uh, when, when they when you when you learn a linear function, you already learned this. Okay, I can give you another example. Um, how about this? G of x equal to x minus four over 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 
it is rational function? Yes, it is. Because on the top we have a polynomial, the bottom of another polynomial, you have two polynomial. And in order to find a vertical asymptote, you just need to set the bottom equal to zero. Okay. And this, this is in quadratic form, you factor them. Okay. Some students still have trouble with factoring. I don't, I don't know why. You guys need to go back and review, just think about it, you know. This is mathematics. You have to review every day. You have to do math every day. You cannot just do math one day and the other day. You skip. You do something else. It's never work like that, okay? So, you factor this. I, I go over here. And you add them up in a smiley face, right? So you have uh, negative 1 plus 2 here, equal to 0. Okay? And then you see that you can apply zero product property. You have 3x minus 1 equals 0 x plus 2 uh, equal to 0, and you have x equal to 1 over 3, and x equal to negative 2. So you have two vertical asymptotes. We have two vertical asymptotes for this one. Okay? So again, it depends on uh, what rational function <laughs> you are do you're doing. Uh, you may have one vertical asymptote, or you may have two or three or more vertical asymptotes. So it depends at the bottom. Okay, if the degree of the polynomial at the bottom is uh, is high, then you have more vertical uh, as the top. Okay. Okay. So <coughs> next, I want to uh, talk about uh, how to find um, horizontal asymptote. So, if you look at the, the equation, the 1 over x and 1 over x squared, the graph of those functions, uh, you will see that horizontal asymptote is